if we are going to have a justice system that provides real justice, there needs to be a balance in the system. And our system was created in a time when we were very worried about persecution of people who were charged with crime. And that was a small agrarian society and now we are a large complex society. And over years, we have further and further left the rights of crime victims behind. If we're going to have a system that people trust in, it's gonna be based on balance. And so the rights of crime victims have to be brought into that system. I was married for almost 30 years and the first few years weren't too bad. The last 10 were not so good and the last six months were bad. He, uh, he hit me, choked me, liked to play with sharp things. One night he was getting all wound up and my daughter left the house and called her grandma who called the police who came to the door and took him away. He bonded out of jail, and when we went down to feed the cats at the house one day, he was waiting, met us at the door with a knife. My mom was going to her car. He told her to come back or he was gonna cut my throat. I got away, because I knew if he got us both in the house, that would pretty much be the end of it. Went to the neighbors, called the police, he stole her car took off, they found him and arrested him and he went to prison. He got two years for the felony menacing, two years for another count of felony menacing and he got 10 years for stealing my mother's car and breaking into the house. Second degree burglary is what he got 10 years for. Never mind that he took a 65 year old woman by the throat threw her into the car with a butcher knife. Never mind that he put a knife to my throat. That didn't count. But he kicked the door to the house in. Now, what kind of justice is that? To me, it said, the door to your house is more important than you are. Barbie Ant, the victim's advocate, came in and set up a meeting. She's very calm. She has a perfect blend of bluntness and compassion. She was just there and she helped steer us through all the court proceedings and she was just a rock. Crime victims are our friends and loved ones and community members who are traumatized by those behaviors that are often the worst that we see in other human beings. Crime victims know no cultural boundaries, they know no socioeconomic boundaries, they know no geographic boundaries. Unfortunately, through no fault of their own, they find themselves in a circumstance uh, that they are going to have to recover from and they're going to need the support of our community programs and our government programs to do that. The concept of crime victim services is one that can be hard to understand. But the simple way is, if anyone you loved was hurt, how would you want them treated? And that's, at, that's the most basic definition of what Crime Victim Services is all about, making sure that that happens. Soy peruano. Llegué acá a los Estados Unidos con un contrato de trabajo en el campo de la ganadería. Cuando llegué acá, Nunca pensé que, que, que iba a encontrar una realidad muy dura, que, que, la, que los maltratos físicos y la falta de alimentos, la falta, la posibilidad de ver un médico, la, la falta de acceso a un teléfono, que, que personas como mi empleador puedan negar acceso a los derechos más fundamentales a una persona simplemente por haber venido a trabajar acá. Esos son los malos tratos que cometieron conmigo y siguen cometiendo ahora con, con las personas que siguen trabajando en los ranchos. Los americanos se quejan mucho de las personas ilegales. Estas personas como yo vienen a trabajar legalmente pero sin embargo violan todos sus derechos los americanos. ¿Quién dice algo a estos americanos? 
nadie hace nada por esto. Yo estaba cansado de recibir estos malos tratos, maltratos psicológicos y llamé a la policía y traté de, de salir y escapar de esa realidad porque no soportaba más. En principio pensé que no me iban a ayudar y pensé que el pagar o el costo de un abogado era demasiado caro aquí. Conocí la oficina de Colorado Legal Services, hablé con Jennifer Lee, me dijo que tenía muchos casos, que había a personas que habían pasado o habían tenido el mismo caso que yo. Empecé a confiar en ellos y llevó mi caso, conocimos agentes de la FBI y conversábamos mi caso, vieron mi caso. Y en ese proceso se, solucion, se, se solucionó mi caso primero con mi empleador y luego Jennifer vio o, o arregló o solucionó mi estatus mi en este país. We here in Colorado were the sixth state in the United States to pass a constitutional amendment that gave crime victims rights. So they're not just statutory rights, laws that could be changed by the whim of a of a legislature. And in Colorado, that vote was over 80% of the voters. That's a major mandate that says, we want this right, this set of rights for crime victims uh, to be important and fundamental to our justice system. In 2006, a day that started just like any other day, uh, my wife Ellen had Emily drive uh, to school. And we've got two kids, Emily and Casey, and they're twins. And a few weeks earlier, we'd gotten them cell phones for their 16th birthday. But still under permit, and it was Emily's day to drive. And Ellen dropped them off at school, brought the car home. As Ellen was headed down to Denver at the gas station, she stopped and, and on the scanner there, there was uh, a report of a gunman at the school. And Ellen came back to the house and I did what every parent might do and that's go to the school. And from the CBI report, we know that uh, a gunman entered the school and at 11.06, walked into room 206 at Platte Canyon High School. He fired around into the wall. He asked all of the male students and some of the female students and the teacher to leave the room. Jefferson County Regional SWAT had responded and they did an amazing job. They got six guys into that room and the gunman shot and killed Emily before he brought the weapon to himself and the SWAT team shot him. One of the things that was really important, very deliberate for Ellen and I, was that our daughter was a victim of a school shooting. But we aren't going to be victims. Losing Emily was, was horrific and it, it was pretty fascinating because the, the compassion of the country was absolutely amazing. We wanted to do something and we started the I Love You Guys Foundation and that was based on a text message that Emily sent while she was held hostage. In the immediate aftermath of Platte Canyon, uh, a, an organization came together to support us and the foundation, and it was a ride from Columbine High School to Platte Canyon High School. We committed that the proceeds from that event would go to the families of the other six girls that were held hostage. But we had a challenge. The foundation couldn't give the money directly to the girls but we could through COVA. And it was an amazing gift from COVA because they managed that funds transfer. 100% of those funds were passed straight through to the families of the other six girls. We wrote a mission statement for the foundation. It's amazingly prophetic because it talks about restoring and protecting the joy of youth in collaboration with districts, departments, agencies, other organizations. In 2009, we started looking seriously at school safety. There is a lack of common language between student staff and first responders, and we created a protocol that incorporated common language, clear and distinct language, uh, to assist in a crisis. Because of our story, Emily gave us a voice, and, and that unique position has really allowed for us to, to take that message to a variety of audiences. Crime victims' rights in Colorado are based on a simple principle, 
that crime victims have the right to be heard, to be present, and to be informed about all the things that go on in the criminal justice system that matter to them. And more importantly, that it's our commitment that they be treated with dignity and respect. That's the simple concept and everything else flows from that. The second part of that, which is I think where the real difference is, is that we have developed a sense of collaboration. And you can have all the things on the books that you want. You can have laws and you can have constitutional amendments and you can have all of those nice things. But if you don't have the people in the justice system and in the community delivering those rights in a way that is seamless for the crime victim, that is, that is focused on the need of the crime victim and not on the need of the system, uh, then you, you have a, a, a fairly weak delivery of system. And what we do have and what we have established in Colorado, and it's confirmed if you go any place in the country, they will tell you, oh yeah, Colorado is all about collaboration, really true collaboration. And that's the heart of what we have for crime victims now. On the morning of October 4th, 1998, we were woken up by a phone call. It was a policeman from the Boulder Police Department who told us our son Ben, who was 21 at the time and the oldest of our four children, had been in a car accident and he was currently in surgery. So we hurried up, went over to Boulder Community Hospital, were met with, by the policeman who told us at that time they had no more information and we were escorted to a small waiting room. And in a short while, probably a half an hour, the doctor came out of surgery and told us Ben didn't make it. We later learned that Ben's best friend was killed at the scene. And the young man who was driving was 22 years old and he ran a red light at 65 miles an hour. Having a victim advocate made a huge difference in our experience. When we arrived at the hospital, there were two advocates there waiting for us to assist us in whatever we needed at the time as we waited during Ben's surgery and afterwards they stayed with us. Then when we went through the criminal justice piece of this because uh, the driver was charged and so we went to court a number of times, there were hearings we were assigned a woman who was our advocate during that process. She kept us fully informed. She was physically present at every hearing, every time we had to go to the DA's office. She was very, very helpful in a world that we had never navigated before. And also we had another advocate, someone in the victim's compensation department who kept us fully aware and informed of the things that were available to us, whether it was compensation physically or counseling that was available. So when you're thrown into a situation that you've never experienced and have no idea which way is up, we were walked with the entire process. This is a journal entry I found in Ben's journal. I'm pretty sure it was written within the last three months that he was alive. When I was young and ignorant, my goal in life was to change the world. I figured that would make my life meaningful, that it would make me important. I didn't want to die and not have my life remembered. I didn't want to be a nobody. But as I look back at my past goal, I'm almost ashamed. Ashamed of the goal itself and the reason I wanted to accomplish it. I'm not ashamed because it was vain, no, I'll I am ashamed because it was accomplished the moment I was born. Every moment of my life, I have affected or influenced some other person, some other creature, or even some non-living particle. In doing so, each of those things I affect, in turn affect some other item, organism, person, which in turn may influence or affect millions, billions, trillions, or even more things during the span of its life. And everything you and I do affect, if even very slightly, the huge string of events. And every one of us and all of our actions are important. Every breath we take, every step we walk, everything we do changes the world. 
Now I can rest easy since my goal for life is accomplished. The way crime impacts out is you have an individual impact, you have a, a circle of loved one impact, and then you have a community impact. Think of it as throwing a, a rock into a pond and you have these concentric circles of, of reaction to that rock. After Columbine High School shootings, every youth mental health bed in the state of Colorado was filled within 24 hours because of secondary trauma that occurred to kids who were fragile anyway. And so when you start to multiply out and you see a tragedy that's the first thing on the news and then it's the, the next thing on the news the next day and then it's repeated on CNN and then it's on the web and you think about all of those impacts, that has an impact on all of us and that's what we have to be ready to respond to. It's important for victims to have rights because then they don't feel betrayed by the judicial system and it, it'll keep them safer. I'm usually outgoing and, you know, go anywhere, do anything, wander around at night. And he took that from me. It's like living in an armed camp all the time. My daughter knew, text me before you get here. I don't care if it's two in the morning, don't come through that door and not let me know that you're coming in. And you shouldn't have to live like that. Los Estados Unidos es el, es el país donde supuestamente eh, se respetan los derechos de, de toda persona, los derechos humanos. Lo último que se puede perder es la dignidad. Siempre que yo tenga posibilidad de, de hacer ver que hay personas que están mal y hay leyes en este país que pueden decir que está haciendo mal y tiene que cambiar, lo voy a hacer. I don't think the general public is aware of the impact of crime victimization because in this day and age we get sound bites or we see something in the news for a day or three days or a week and then it goes away and the general public thinks the impact of the crime went away that quickly also. When you are the victim of a crime it changes but it never goes away. I've had the opportunity to get around the country now and, and one of the things I've realized is that Colorado has one of the best victims advocacy organizations in the country. Those resources can be varied. Um, some of them happen in the form of financial aid. Uh, some happen in, in the form of the mental health side of things. The compassion of the people that we met in the immediate aftermath uh, was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. We have this one week a year that we set aside to honor crime victims and crime victims' rights. And that's a good thing, it's a good designation. But the truth of the matter is, is that this is a 365 day a year responsibility that we have to society to make sure that they are able to be supported and we are ready to support them in any way they need and that our systems, both our community-based systems, our nonprofit world, and our justice systems, our government world, are ready to support crime victims in a way that the spirit of the constitutional amendment, dignity and respect, to be informed, heard, and present, is always uh, in our forefront. That we are victim-centered in how we deliver services and we are victim-sensitive about what the unique cultural and, and crime-specific needs are of those crime victims.